who else has arrived. Um, our smile with comforts, welcome. And Fairy Princess Valentine, nice to have you here. And Pinky, and Rick, and Mimi Productions, and Kama, and we also have William Charles by Numb, and Daniel, nice to see you, and Deidre, T, and let's see, Dr. Jasmine 1, yes sir, everything is going on fine with me, and Austin, and Amazing Adventures of Zeke, and let's see, Albert Free Felsen, uh, let me see. Sword, I saw Jason in chapter 2. Uh, if he's still there, uh, yes, uh, welcome Jason. I said hi as well. Uh, okay, so very princess, I said I might have to fix the mic. Uh, okay, well, let's see what we have to do here. But if it's not too much of a distraction, now uh, please uh, let me go so we can uh, do this uh, very well. Yeah. Okay, so the problem. Uh, let me see if I could if I could restart it or not. Uh, hang on. Yeah. Nick, 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 Yeah. <laughs> 
Gaudium. Smile, Smile baby. baby, come on, come on. Kick, kick higher, higher girls. girls. Okay, yeah, where's, where's the robot? Robot, robot. turn out of frame, robot. robot. All right, cue right, the, the shot. Yes, yes, yes. yes. cut. cut. Nick Nick, I live in number one Nickelodeon. Nick 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 Nickelodeon. Nick 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 Nickelodeon. Aren't you glad? You watching? You watching? You watching Nick? Aren't you glad? You watching? You watching? You watching Nick? Aren't you glad? You watching? You watching? You watching Nick? Aren't you glad? You watching? You watching? You watching Nick?
Do 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 Put myself back down. Okay, everybody. Uh, let me know if this is better. If you can see or hear me clearly better, uh, make sure that you press that F in the chat there. Uh, sorry for the delays and technical difficulties. <laughs> no fucking very jump scare says that, yo. Yep. Okay, so yeah, let me know if it's much better. Okay, so Carl is saying much, Carl is saying that's much better, and Norbert is saying it's much better. Okay, uh, excellent. Okay, so I apologize, I apologize for the technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's being funny here. F for. Friends who do stuff together, you as for you and me. Okay, so everybody can hear me just fine. Alright, everybody. Oh, let's see. Okay, yeah, so it was a camera that apparently has some worse audio number. I think on my end, I probably have to fine tune it to make sure that it will work well, like for it next time. <laughs> oh, we got. Val, Val tunes, a uh, Val and tunes here, uh, saying insert funeral music for the previous mic. Yes. Okay. So once again, I apologize for technical difficulties, but welcome everybody to this Nick Royan 45th anniversary stream. Boy, the celebration, I should say. So yeah, uh, what I want to do with you guys is. You know, first off, uh, before we get to uh, what you guys might really be waiting for, which is uh, the special fan art that uh, you guys uh, helped me with in terms of suggestions for characters, uh, I want us to basically talk a little uh, about our memories of our favorite Nick Royan series and, you know, whatever it is regarded the channel. So, let me see if there's any comments that I missed. Oh, Dietro saying that, uh, see, here's Rocco's modern wife in the background. Yep, absolutely. Let me see. We got this here that's playing in the background. My trusty, uh, sampler of 90s Nicktoon classics. Okay, so, uh, Plus Blue is saying, uh, it's all good, my guy. Yeah. Though, like, we all make mistakes sometimes. Oh, yeah, Luke is mentioning about the 15th anniversary of the Nickelodeon in Canada. Yeah, I remember when it was. Uh, so, what I remember is to promote the launch of Nickelodeon Canada, I believe it was the Sunday before its launch uh, in, 29, in 2009, uh, White TV aired. Some classic Nicktoons, uh, they aired the first episode of Rocco, at least the first episode in production order, which is Carnival Knowledge and Stand at Your Naval, and then they aired The Angry Beavers, the first episode of that, and then the first episode of Cat Dog, and then a random later season Rugrats episode uh, from season 8 or 9 or so. So yeah, I remember that fondly. I remember, uh, I remember watching that, uh, pretty fondly, uh, and that was also pretty much the first time I saw the Angry Beavers officially. And also one of the first real times that I watched Rocco's Mario Life as well. So I remember that day pretty fondly, uh, leading up to the wants of Nick Roy in Canada. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pinky's accent, what's the episode that's playing right now? Uh, that episode happens to be... The one where Rocco is getting his uh, driver's license renewed, uh, Skid Marks, I believe it's called. And Norbert's saying, glad that, uh, that uh, he's glad that I'm being a little more positive with Nick Royan right now. Nick didn't have a very uh, happy 45th anniversary. It came off the heels of the biggest, most scathing controversy ever. Yeah, I know that documentary series uh, regarding Dan Snyder's shows, but. Uh, I never watched it, and I have no immediate plans to check out for myself, but, you know, 
Uh, this is coming from the same guy who still absolutely loves the Rance Debbie soul despite what's going on with its creator, you know. Uh, we just have to focus on, uh, and that's why, that's one of the things that uh, I want to stress for the stream is that, yeah, I want to focus on the positives of Nickelodeon, uh, their shows, whether the animated ones or the live action ones, uh, not to think too much about any of those behind the scenes uh, controversies, if you still love the shows, uh, feel free to do so. And he also says that he also remembers the premiere of Nick Canada. Although Canada already has kind of a Nick uh, Canada, which is white TV. Exactly. Uh, although Family Channel, which is otherwise the Canadian version of Disney Channel, they aired some live action Nick shows, uh, some live action Nickelodeon sitcoms to be exact. Uh, not all of them, but just a few. Uh, let's see. Uh, and keep saying that it doesn't like friends that be eight more, and now that he loves Popeye. Oh, that's absolutely fine. Uh, let's see, Detroit's accent is Day Phantom on the Alf the Wolf uh, DVDs. Well, at least uh, not the ones that uh, I have. Uh, well, maybe Jason, if he's still here, maybe he could fill me out on these details. But yeah, with the Alf the Wolf collection, like initially they just focus on. Uh, they work. They focus on Rocco and Hey Arnold and Cat Dog, the Angry Beavers and Our uh, Real Monsters. Uh, but then later on, like those shows were replaced uh, uh, when they started releasing more volumes of Alf the Vault. They threw in the Wild Strawberries and then Jimmy Neutron, and they might have included Day Phantom. Uh, again, uh, any, any of you guys knowledgeable on the history of all these Nick releases on DVD, you could fill me out on that. Okay, so we got Blake here saying that the first episode of Spongebob that he remembers watching is uh, New Student Starfish. Yes, exactly. And does everybody know what uh, number Spongebob is turning uh, in May? 25! Uh, Post Blue said, I thought that was a uh, season 3 episode. I think he means uh, the first episode that he remembers watching, uh, not necessarily the first episode of the entire series. Oh, we got something from Mimi uh, saying that she's recently been uh, creating a ton of OCs, uh, 28 to be exact, uh, with the main seven being Party Ammo, uh, Gooper J. Wooper, uh, Speedster Swift Mouse, uh, Green Bell, Cosmic Starlight, uh, sweet Coon and Wonderful. And those all sound cool. And I can't wait as somebody who's created a bunch of OCs myself. Okay, uh, Albot's saying that two Malcolm in the Middle cast members or were on was on the Fairy of Parents, uh, Justin uh, Burfield and Frankie Boone, as well as. The wild sorberries be, being uh, having Chris uh, Masterson uh, as the voice of Saint G, and on and on Malcolm he's known as Fred. Oh yeah, Saint G. Uh, that's the name. Uh, that's the name of uh, that one uh, pop star or whatsoever that Eliza and Debbie kind of had this love triangle with. Ah, okay. Uh, Norbert saying that he actually has a special video planned for his uh, birthday. Oh, that sounds cool. And in case I don't get to do so on the day of your birthday, I uh, wish you a happy uh, birthday, Norbert. And William saying favorite uh, Mighty B characters are Happy, Portia, and Gwen. Yeah, I haven't watched the Mighty B in a long time. I just remember being on, and even as a kid, I knew that. There's some Ren and Stimpy stuff going on there. <laughs> uh, I just remember something about Portia. I remember in the Billy and Mandy reunion, Grey Delisle was asked, uh, who's her least favorite character to play? Uh, she said Portia is, uh, is, is one who qualifies. And from the very little that I remember of Portia, yeah, she does seem unlikable. Uh, she, she's, that elf, she, she's that snobby girl type. But again, I I I all want to 
Canada might be, if only if we're on Paramount Plus in Canada. I don't know if it's on Paramount Plus where you guys are. And speaking of Jasmine saying that he still wants his old school Dick Warrior on Paramount Plus. Yes, that's awesome. And I remember talking about uh, in my Valentine's Day stream how I watched some Wild Soulberries and got myself more into the show uh, from there. Okay, everybody, uh, I think it's about time that we get straight to uh, what you guys have been waiting for, uh, which is uh, what are my choices that you guys wept for me for the 6th Fan Arts Challenge. But before we do, we're gonna have another intermission. And this one should be uh, a re reflective of where Nickelodeon first started off. programming for young people. Kids are finally getting the kind of television they deserve. Introducing Nickelodeon. Children's programming that's fit for children. 13 hours of programming a day, seven days a week, that will make them wonder, laugh, ponder, and think. We took everything that was wrong with children's television and got rid of it. We kept everything that was good about it and made it better. The result is Nickelodeon, the young people's satellite network. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, so that was, so what you just saw there was, okay, I'll talk about that in a moment, but first, Yes, as you can see here, uh, these are the six choices that I've chosen, and I'm gonna be uh, naming everybody right now and giving shout outs to those who have requested for him. Oh, hang on. Yes, so first we got Veronica from the Fairy All Parents, the number one craziest Trixie Tank fan. Uh, this was requested by Woke, and I absolutely agree with him that he is a very underrated character. And next we have Gur from Invader Zim, uh, requested by two people, uh, including uh, the Spuds Boy, and in his iconic dog suit, and he has a taco that's flying out the hands, that flying out of his hands, and going to be uh, caught by Pork Shop. And there were two people who requested for Pork Shop as well. And then we got an As Told by Ginger character, but a rather deep cut one. It's Darren's older brother, Will Parrison, uh, requested by Antoni Garcia. And somebody requested for Ginger herself, but I want to try out a character from the show that I never uh, really drew before. Actually, I never drew Will at all. I drew Darren before, but I, I was really excited to receive uh, this choice here. And by the way, uh, Antonio, if if you're watching this, uh, I just want to remind you that I did like your As Told By Ginger reviews that you did uh, years ago. And we got Obwina from Ah uh, Real Monsters, which is turning 30 years old this uh, October. And uh, there were two people who requested for her. And last but certainly not least, uh, we got Queen Vexus, voiced by the late great Eartha Kent. Oh, and of course, Abuina, we can't forget about her voice actress, Christine Kavanaugh, since it was uh, almost 10 years since she passed away. 
Wait, yes, Queen Vexus from My Wife as a Teenage Robot, requested by Kristen Frades, who once again is one of my uh, best uh, coffee supporters. So of course I couldn't resist giving him this little bonus here, of including a character from what I assume is his favorite uh, Nicktoon of all time. So alright everybody, uh, uh, what, first let me see uh, about the chat here. Let's see. And uh, Enki saying that I serve done Dora and Patrick. Yeah, I know like the lack of SpongeBob characters in particular, yeah. Uh, but you know, maybe just maybe, uh, around the time of Spongebob's 25th anniversary, I'll do the compromise of doing some Spongebob fan art. Uh, no promises though. So yeah, apologies to everybody uh, who couldn't uh, make it, uh, could have their choices make, uh, make it to the final cut. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, on the top corner of the screen, the top left corner has to say, if you guys uh, want to guarantee that you want to uh, get your character request drawn, you could donate to me or full on uh, commit me at coffee. Uh, they're wide open and they're affordable. In fact, uh, today's the last day of an adult swim uh, buy one get one free commit special that I have active. So you should do that before 12 o'clock midnight Eastern Standard Time hits. So, alright, let's get to the car run. Okay, let's see, uh, Norbert, uh, said, uh, he does remember, but if I only ask for, uh, Nick, anime and Nick Roland characters or a lot of action ones allowed too. Well, yeah, uh, I prefer just anime characters, whether they're from a Nick Toon or, like, a Nick Jr. show, but I did say that, uh, live action characters could be caricatured, uh, for, uh, this, uh, template. But, yeah, uh, most of you guys are requested for Nick Toon characters, which, uh, uh, you guys, uh, seem to care about the Nick Toons, uh, more than, like, live action shows, and, which is understandable, since, uh, I'm with you guys on that. Let's see, what else am I missing? Uh, let's see. Uh, Spuds Boy is asking, uh, I wonder where Joanna Davidovitz will work at now, since Primal Screen is sadly shut down after next month. Well, okay, I think, uh, Plus Boo's already answered him that she's now at Rankin and Mason, uh, since she left, uh, Primal Screen in the, in, like, uh, the early 2010s, and she became a freelancer. That is true, I believe she has left, uh, Primal Screen a long time ago. And yeah, I'm going to miss those guys. They're one of Atlanta's very best animation studios. And sticking to the topic of Nickelodeon, I like what they did, uh, for... Uh, the bumpers, and you guys, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, this animator who used to work at Primal Screen, he's based in Atlanta, and uh, his name is uh, David Strandquest, uh, you can look him up on YouTube, uh, he's been uh, uploading basically on a daily basis of the different promos he's animated uh, for Cartoon Network and Nick and other places uh, like that, and he's very interactive with uh, the audience. So definitely give him a follow, and yeah, he posted uh, the reel of uh, the work the work he's done for Primal Screen, including uh, Nickelodeon bumpers like like a SpongeBob one and a Wild Strawberries one. A really good stuff. And speaking of bumpers, so yeah, uh, what I showed you before, I went over to our main drawn here is that the very first time Nick Lloyd was launched uh, on April 1st 
Uh, yeah, basically, they were like, you know what kids in the late 70s are really into? Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, so that was the aesthetic of uh, the network that first wants. Based off of the actual, the improper noun of Nickelodeon. Uh, with, uh, you know, this sort of uh, the device where you could pay a nickel and you watch a movie. Oh, hang on. I think there's... There might be a gap missing here. Yeah. And I also love the promo that said... Hang on. Yeah. And I also love the promo that basically says, uh, We took uh, everything wrong about kids TV and improved it. And I was like, yeah, including the color. <laughs> There we go. Uh, let me know if that sounds better. So, okay, so I'm gonna be I'm going back here. Yeah, I don't know why I shut off uh, Vexus just now. Yes, uh, plus bro, uh, the infamous Rocco episode, Canned, is playing. And so we're gonna, gonna be getting the, the, tel the telephone hotline joke <laughs> that everybody knows and finds questionable. Enthusiastic about the job was why his delivery of Oh Baby was hubrously flat.
guys to and fix it up because Veronica is envious of Trixie's fame. I'm going to color these little these little like those curved uh, lines here around their eyes. I'm gonna color them green. Autism Month. Um, okay, thank you. Yes, uh, happy Autism Month for, for you guys. To you guys as well. I wish you a happy one. Uh, well, I don't promise it. Uh, if I'm able to, I might do a stream uh, all, all about uh, Autism Acceptance Month. This is a skill service. So, as I often like to say, uh, if there are any uh, additional details I could add, uh, I'll most likely add it uh, after the stream. I'll just uh, do my best to just keep things to the essentials, since we're already off schedule. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Veronica's skirt, and of course I have to draw uh, our, our color Trixie, the Trixie doll that she's holding. Wash your hands. This was back when I believe it was by the end of season one where he started to get more development and was a member of Rock Cole's friend group, which this consists of him and Heifer. But now it's him, Hef and Philbert. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna be covering Trixie's eye curls a little wider. Just turn. Tracy's boots here. Well, here we go 
Alright, so now we have Arnold playing. Uh, one of my, uh, one of his favorite, uh, fairy of parents gangs. Hang on, let me just turn that on a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so he's saying that one of his favorite fairy of parents fairy gangs is, I'm respecting your privacy by knocking, but asserted my authority as your parent by coming in anyway. Bam! Yes, I love that one too. And the whole episode... Information Super Highway is an FOP classic. Uh, what else did I miss in? Uh, let's see, a fair Prince Valentine say they're both two who wear, uh, who wear their hair in long ponytails, uh, dresses with pink in the color schemes, and crazy obsessions with a popular student. Wait, uh, hang on, let me see who she's referring to. Oh, uh, Star Sapphire from DC uh, Superhero Girls. Oh, okay, so I never made the connection between those two. Uh, I haven't watched much DC Superhero Girls 2019 in general. And yes, I've seen uh, the episode of Smile and Friends uh, with uh, Grimboy. It was through the Adult Swim's YouTube live stream where they aired their April Fool's Day pranks of recreating a couple of episodes with puppets, and then they saw a sneak peek of Season 2 with the first episode of that season. Oh, uh, let's see. A uh, uh, princess, uh, it's go, it's go is acting. Uh, I want wondering what uh, live acting Nick characters like Krista Darwick or Key and Carol look like as cartoon characters. Hmm, I don't know about uh, Carissa, but I know with Keen and Kale, uh, for sure they will be great, excellent cartoon characters. I could imagine an animated adaptation of those two uh, easily. Let's see. Uh, Two-tail spot to say, I uh, hope one day uh, I could draw in a sketchbook every now and then. Yeah, I still have that in mind and do a sketchbook tour video. Uh, especially like as a way of looking back uh, how far my art has came. Teacher's accent if Spencer Quine is in Hey Arnold. Yeah, like in the first, uh, like in the first episode, the first, sorry, what am I saying? In the last couple of seasons, it plus the first movie, uh, he voiced it. Oh, if I saw your Nick, Nick Roy in movie Steven logo from Hey Arnold the movie, uh, I think I saw it on Twitter. Uh, in case I didn't, uh, it. Okay, so I uh, want to thank you guys uh, for the engagement so far. If you're enjoying the stream, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more uh, fun interactive animation uh, discussions and celebrations like this. And uh, make sure you we be a person on Coffee to Soul, uh, extra proof of your uh, support. Uh, I don't have the uh, sponge out water on DVD Blake. Sorry. Uh, yes, I do know that Scott Fellows uh, worked on Fairy Out Parents before uh, doing Johnny Test to classify school survival guide and big time Russ says super noobs. Yeah, I know. Uh, which is why uh, Guy Moon was able to do music for uh, all of those shows except for super noobs. Oh, oh, and not, oh, sorry, he did do giant, the music for Giant to Caesar. Just the live action sitcoms that Scott Phil has created. And, and 
yes sir, the last episode of Rocko is put to pest pasture and future swag, which I, I have those up, okay everybody, uh, gonna be uh, going back to work here, really nice channel with you guys, okay, so now we're gonna move on to Gur. So, uh, this is your request, Spuds Boy, and uh, somebody else, uh, I believe goes by the name of James Borland. Uh, he requested for Gur as well. So, the both of you, uh, what I did with it. And remember, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, something you could, uh, do a discussion. Nick Roy a topic up, please make sure you drop them in the chat. Okay, so, uh, one fun fact about Harvey the mailman in Hey Arnold. Uh, I didn't realize this until like in more recent years, but he's voiced by Wu Rawls, who I know uh, for uh, his song, You Never Find. Uh, what's, alright, the first time I heard that song was on The Proud Family, and also know him for the Garfield specials. Uh, he was basically Garfield's singing voice of sorts. to cover the top of shell. Okay, so, uh, there's something about Helga I want to talk about, right? Okay, so, you guys uh, watch Robot Chicken, right? As some of you may be aware of how sometimes they don't really get the source material right. Uh, oftentimes, it's their, na their naivety of the original source material might work in the joke's favor, but uh, once gets uh, that parodies hate are though, they assume that Helka is like a one-dimensional uh, star Wars Arnold, when those who really love the show, who really watch enough episodes, can tell you that no, it's not really the case. Helga's much more complex than sees the boy who secretly loves Arnold. Like anybody who's watched the episode Helga on the Couch could, uh, you know, could easily uh tell you that. Not the outside. 
Yes, I'm going to go current inside this top hole here. Oh wait, I, cause well, there was a gap I just closed. I have heard that Billy and Mandy is coming back to Checkered Past. Uh, I know that Evil Concarne briefly replaced it, and then it was just uh, Bill. Uh, it was just Dexter's Lab and Curse Kelly Dog, just those two souls uh, for a while. But now uh, everything is seems to be a back on uh, how it used to be with its initial lineup. Oh yeah, I do remember Cosmo Wanda appearing in one episode and that's the by School Survival Guide. I saw a clip of that. Uh, see, Jasmine's asking if I watched the Angry Beavers. Yes, I have, and I even mentioned earlier in the stream that uh, the first time watching it was like when White TV aired the first episode as a way of promoting the launch of Nick Boy in Canada. And well, not one of my absolute favorite uh, Nick Tunes, I don't love it as much as, well, uh, uh, one of the Beavers who happens to be in the chat right now. Um, I do think it's great, and I do. I do think it's good stuff, like the chemistry between Norbert and Daggett, and also, uh, uh, same time last week is one of my favorites for sure, along with the Beaver Fever, and I do wish Bye Bye Beavers was made as an actual episode. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else I've been missing. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, right. I forgot about that show. A hundred things to do. A um, hundred things to do before high school. That's another show that Scott Adams, so not Scott Adams, for, forget him. A uh, Scott Fellows created. Uh, but yeah, kind of like with a hundred deeds of good deeds of A. McDowell, they only did like a quarter of those uh, one hundred things to do before high school. It's basically a spiritual successor to uh, Death to Classify uh, that series. I only watched a little bit of it. Let's see what else. And yes, I have heard of the Bye Bye Beavers uh, reanimated uh, project. I never contributed to it myself, but I do with uh, those who contribute to, to it that uh, the final results turn out well. And Joseph Jones is here, hey what's up? And Chris is here, welcome. Uh, just want to let you know uh, that I drew your request uh, for uh, Queen Vexus. I hope you like what I've done with her so far. And thank you all once again uh, for uh, being one of my top coffee supporters. And to those who support me as well on coffee. Uh, a huge shout out to all of you. Hey, big notice in some of my most recent videos that I make sure that I have a little part near the end before the end card, before the end screen, that I list my top supporters there. And if you want to be one, uh, my coffee, a donation box, and commission slots are wide open. So, yes, uh, we're gonna be uh, moving on to Pork Shop.
Yeah, so rest in peace to Earth uh, I haven't watched much of Queen Vixus, or my wife as a teenage robot in general, but I do think of her as Isabel first and foremost, along with being the earliest, or one of the earliest cat women. And her passing was the reason why the Emperor's New School will end the production uh, after season 2. Oh, Tess is here. Uh, hey, uh, welcome. Uh, how's my favorite General Scarfang? Yeah, the episode of Arnold that's playing right now is a uh, stoop kid. <laughs> stoop kid's afraid to leave his stoop. Uh, another classic Arnold episode. Uh, if you guys have your favorite Arnold episode, uh, make sure you drop them in the chat. Okay, unrelated, but I hear some noise going on in the kitchen. Uh, could it be cooked in the making? Oh, uh, I just have to wait to see. Uh, oh, I might post it on what's going on in the kitchen there. Yeah, just uh, making him uh, a bit darker than how he is in the cell here, cause. Uh, I don't know if Porkchop's actually this light shade of bluish indigo. Uh, it's just a, uh, an animation cell that I uh, post that I just post pasted in as reference. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off Queen Vexus again, yes, so that my Porkchop drawing here is all freed up. Norbert saying, uh, oh yeah, Norbert, I am aware of the rumor about the original end of Pigeon Man is going to have Pigeon Man, well, I don't know if I can really say the exact phrase, but, you know, end his own wife, uh, that's a bit safer, but, yeah, uh, Craig Barber debunked it multiple times, and that reminds me of when, uh, Channel Frederator did a video about 107 facts about Hey Arnold, and, I believe they did mention about that rumor actually being a sin, but then they did another 107 facts about Hey Arnold, this time with Craig Barwick on board. It was around the time of the Jungle movie being released. And yeah, Craig makes sure that the whole thing about Pigeon Man and his own wife, uh, he, it's, it's not true. You know, he. Those who watch the Jungle movie know that Pigeon Man is alive and well. He's now in Paris, uh, with all of the pigeons at Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, if you choose to pronounce it. So, to the two of you who requested for pork chop, I hope you uh, love what I did with him. And now I'm gonna go back to the chat. I'll probably turn back on Vexus. Let's see. Let's see, uh, maybe he's saying that he doesn't like, uh, 
middle most post uh, because the anime says choppy, the characters are forgettable, the humor is too childish, possibly probably the worst thing Warriors show uh, ever made. Oh, it's okay if you have that opinion. Like, to be honest, uh, I only saw really the holiday episode of Middle Most Post. Uh, and for the time being, at least, it's not my biggest cup of tea, though. But it seems fine. And same thing with It's Pony. I only saw the holiday episode of that, too. But I have a feeling that I might like that show even more. Uh, let's see. Okay, so, uh, Norbert said that he has an idea uh, for uh, Commission. Okay, yes, a already mentioned uh, right now regarding Pitcher Man uh, meeting up with Quasi Bodo uh, after he went to Notre Dame and and gets the and got the pitches to leave the gargoyles alone. Oh yeah, that does sound cool. So keep being touched if you want to go forward with that Norbert. Uh, thanks. I see. And what are my thoughts on rock, paper, scissors? Um, I've seen like maybe a couple clips of it, and I don't know. It seems it seems okay. Uh, I, I I I it's one of those Nicktoons that you know they exist just like Melmo's post and its pony. Like they exist because just just because you know Nick can't just have SpongeBob and Wild House stuff. They have to have a variety as well, but I don't know, I don't hear much people talk about rock, paper, scissors. I didn't feel much hype for it. I see it in my YouTube uh, subscriptions because the Nicktoon channel, which is formerly known as the, the Nicktoon Animation Studios YouTube channel, but they retooled it to be more kid-friendly. Uh, you know, they upload some clips and episodes from it. And I remember seeing one clip that I believe it was shared by YTV on their Instagram with paper getting ready to uh, do some writing or something and uh, you know, just having some troubles uh, getting himself in the mood. Uh, that was pretty funny. Oh yeah, Rock, Paper, Scissors looks okay. Just another one of, of those shows in the same category as Pickle and Peanut, Pickle Banana Cricket, Boy, Girl, Dog, Cat, Cheese, Mouse, or whatever that one is, where it's just, uh, you know, these improper nouns, and they are friends, and they hang out, and that's it. Oh, uh, Steven's here, and he likes my, uh, girl. Uh, thanks, pal. Uh, let's see what else. Inky's accent if Garfield aired on Nickelodeon. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember if Garfield even aired, like, before, uh, they bought them. I think? But they've yet to make a Nicktoon with, uh... With Garfield, just like what they did with Ninja Turtles. Okay, so Nick bought Ninja Turtles in 2009, right? And their first series of them came out in 2012. We are now in the fifth anniversary of Nick Lillian buying the rights to Garfield, but they, they haven't really done anything with him aside from using him in their marketing and their video games like Nick Lillian All Star Brawl, and even the upcoming Garfield movie that's coming out. Uh, it's not from Paramount, it's from Sony Pictures. So, yeah. Uh, I, and I did hear that there was a Garfield series in the making, but they might have cancelled it. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so now we're going to, uh, in here. A deep cut as told by Ginger character. Uh, sort of the, uh, sort of the, uh, and older brother. Like, if you see him, but uh, you know, he's he's older than, like, the main cast. Like, he's in high school, whereas, uh, for the majority of the series, uh, Ginger and her friends are in middle school. So, we see him older he's no way. And when he does appear, he's usually just, uh, just teasing his little brother there. And
okay, let me see how far we are into the stream here. Okay, so, an hour and 12 minutes. Uh, I was thinking that maybe, just maybe, um, if you guys uh, are up to it, uh, after I finish, like, the essentials of this, oh, maybe we should do one round of those, uh, of those, guess what I'm drawing, guess what character I'm drawing type games. I can't guarantee, but if you guys are in and if you guys are up, we have enough time, then I may do it. But, uh, because I already wasted some time dealing with technical difficulties, just gonna focus on doing uh, this trick here. And we'll be back before I have much needed. So if you're all up for it, uh, weave an orange emoji in the chat, whether it's an orange heart or an orange circle, uh, it doesn't matter. Ah, okay. So, got some fun facts from Spongeboy. He said that Rock, Paper, Scissors is probably the first TV credit in years for Conrad Vernon. Uh, he's one of the executive producers. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I know uh, he's he's one of the big shots at DreamWorks at Mason. And previously, he worked on Rocco's Modern Wife. And I think he worked on Red Steppy and The Simpsons as well. Oh, you could correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, that's cool to point out. And Bob Boyle is behind it as well. Uh, that's cool. Oh, uh, we still uh, work. And, oh, yeah, exact producer. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Nobro said that he's on his computer, so he can't type with emojis. Well, I think you, you could be able to. Well, all you have to do is just right click on your mouse and uh, click on where it says. G, and uh, and you could just select select the search for a type of emoji you want. So just right click with your mouse on where the chat bar is to type it in, and you can try and put in an emoji. I see. Okay, so Conrad Vernon didn't work on the Simpsons or Rand Stempy. Okay, thank you. Why is everybody uh, posted uh, orange? Well, yeah, it's just if you guys want me to do a uh, guessing game, uh, if we have the time. So we'll be done off camera before I post this. I'm just gonna be focusing on the essentials of and the characters. to add his boss too, because I know so of the Astro White Jetter characters have some boss on them. It's always cool knowing that, even though you can tell a Kwaski Chupo cartoon when you see it, uh, not all of them look exactly alike. Um, for example, Rock Rats doesn't look exactly like the Wild Swordberries, and Swordberries doesn't look like Ginger completely, like Ginger has its own, uh, quirks to its design, like, even more characters have their whips on their chin than on the Stormberries, <laughs> for one thing. Oh, maybe that's a bit too much, better make it more subtle, like this. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, speaking of Kwaski Chupo, uh, we're gonna be moving on to Obuina. Uh, 
Oh, first one see if there's a second at the shop. Oh, let's see. Uh, BB say rock but that good to begin with. Oh, it's okay. Your paint's absolutely respected. And of course, uh, as someone who's grown 12 ginger, even more than rock rats. Even Duckman is better than rock rats sometimes. I may have to rewatch uh, more episodes of uh, that series, uh, Rugrats to be exact. Although I have watched uh, a few of my favorite Duckman episodes of its third anniversary uh, last month. And it's just love how expressive the animation style is. Like, Everpeck's uh, art style is a own creative beast in its own right. Oh, there's a gap there. Let me just fix that. So yeah, in a world where uh, a lot of adult cartoons feel more standardized, when it comes to uh, character designs, they feel more like trying to be a bit safe than a model, more reminiscent of either Step McFarland's cartoons or uh, the guys who created Brickleberry and, and Paradise PD. It's nice to look back at uh, Duck Band and see how, uh, even though it is a prime time cartoon aimed at adults, it isn't completely afraid to go all the way with uh, how uh, aware this the animation style is. Even the other day, I posted uh, Peter Alvanzino storyboards from uh, the from one of the episodes, uh, something another future duck. Should have it a wider shade of a black for what I'm covering. Yeah, so rest in peace, uh, Christine Cavanaugh. Uh, as I mentioned, it's gonna be 10 years since he passed away. Uh, even though she retired uh, over a decade earlier, it sucks that she isn't able to. Uh, Sacton out of Caesar, gone for this world. Nancy, I like Nancy Cartwright's Chucky, and I don't mind uh, Candy Milo's Dexter either. Uh, I don't remember what uh, the new voice actress for Obuina in Nickelodeon All Star Brawl is like, but you know, they can't beat the original Christine. So another thing about Klosky Troops, uh, somebody, I believe, uh, it's, uh, Employee of Million, I believe that's their name, uh, when they did, when he did a review of the Wild Sorberries, he talked, he talked about how Klosky Troops' weird, wonky, uh, animation style, it works, it works at best in, on hand painted cells, and yeah, I also agree with that, uh, what I, what I've been saying earlier about what I, about how much I like a duck band's art style, you know, it also could point to the fact that it and also our real monsters, you know, they're weird as they so work because of the type of souls they are, how dark they are compared to rock rats for in particular. How I don't know, just when they're hand painted on cells. Uh, they look their best. That's why some people say that Kwaski Chubo's art style or animation style is like really of its time, really uh, of the 90s. I believe that's part of why people say As Told by Ginger is the worst looking of their Nicktoons, even though it's not too different from the Wild Swordberries. Like, there are characters in Swordberries who have their mouths up. Was this maybe not as. Uh, Commonplace. Hey, yes, uh, definitely. 
got the reason why most Klotsky Chupo cartoons have that weird, ugly European art style is because Gabor Chupo is Hungarian and from Hungary. Yep, uh, I heard uh, from one of the Klotsky Chupo storyboard artists. Uh, he he did say that you know it's it's a studio standard to kind of stick with that house style. Although from the song of the that they made, they kind of they kind of uh, went out of their comfort zone. Like if you look at their sizzle reel from two thousand seven, like not all of their pilots have the standard Klosky Chubo look to them. Oh, let's see, a uh, princess is saying, I know here in the US, so uh, while Ginger Dead Air alongside Nicktoons, a new episode's premiered during Team Nick because it was aiming at a, a slightly older audience. Yeah, that's right. Before Team Nick was a TV channel that replaced the N, it was a uh, block on the main Nickelodeon channel. And yeah, with Ginger being aimed at older audiences, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a shame that. There's hardly any ginger merchandise, or even any in the video games. Like the rip in it is Attack of the Toy Box, where ginger is a collectible uh, character, or you know, one of those uh, collectible uh, tokens that you get. I don't know. Like I, 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 I watched Mike's two Mike's Two Towns Let's Play of it. I, I should have more of an idea what that game's about, but. Yeah, and listening to an interview with Emily Kaplick, she did discuss about how Ginger just wasn't that marketable uh, compared to the other Nicktoons, let alone the ones from Klosky Chubo, and even all grown up with at the same type of show as Ginger, you know, it got way more merchandise and video game rep than Ginger could wish for. Mostly because it's still Rugrats, even though they're older, they're still, they're still like those dumb that we're familiar with, even if their characters have changed a bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna go for Buda's tongue here. Okay. Let's see, uh, sports boy say, although I have to admit, uh, in terms of saying Ginger, I'm saying Ginger have the worst style of Klotsky Chubo, so Dolly Bissom is the ugliest character in the series. <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, I, I sometimes exaggerate with uh, how ugly Dolly is, mostly because of my hatred for her as a character. Don't get wrong, she is, but also I feel like, uh, uh, the substitute teacher from from the episode uh, what's it called Driven to Extremes uh, that Billy West voice I feel like she's uglier I'll give Dodi credit uh, I don't like her I think she's ugly outside and inside but I don't know Grimsley I think that's her name uh, she's, she's as bad I hate the snow. I hate the snow. There's Wool Rawls again. Oops. Okay, now I'm gonna be uh, doing Vexus, the last character here. So yeah, uh, I saw some of my accidents episode of Hey Arnold's playing. Uh, it is the heat episode and the snow episode, which, uh, by the way, was one of the first episodes. They were among the first episodes of Hey Arnold that I watched, along with the Christmas one, which is a classic. Uh, because as I mentioned before, I got into Hey Arnold thanks to watching, of all things, the first movie on VHS. Wild to uh, really. So yeah, it took me years to or like I never got into it until like 2007 or so, or 2007 or 2008 or so, and slowly started to watch more episodes. Let's 
see. BB say, man, hungry, it's meant to be hungry. Get it? Uh, yes, I get it, I get it. Oh, uh, Elbow 3000 say that he's never heard of all real monsters and rock, paper, scissors, so of, of some many standards. Oh, okay, well, I can't, again, I can't speak much for uh, rock, paper, scissors because I never watched a full episode of it, but all real monsters is good. Uh, the designs and the voice acted are among the best parts of it. And yeah, uh, I remember. I remember, uh, I know, uh, Spongeboy, you were Axel, uh, who are some voice actors who I think should be used more. Uh, the guy who voices Crumb, uh, David, uh, Eccles, if I'm saying his name correctly, uh, yeah, he doesn't really have a filmography outside of voicing Crumb and the occasional other Klosky Chupo Nick to like the Wild Swordberries. Uh, he's really good at what he does. I mean, I like Charlie Adler as Ickis and Greg Bird. Thanks for what we know, Norbert. Uh, what we know if that sounds better. Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, BB's gone? Okay, see you next time, BB. Yes, and Spongeboy uh, say, Speaking of as told by Chitcher, uh, we only say that I'm right that the show is more for older audiences as they go away with some serious subjects. Uh, such as, uh, Ed was Gone and No Hope for Courtney. Yes, exactly, and Ed was Gone, uh, was, uh, in particular one of the absolute best episodes of the show. Like, there are quite a few episodes that, you know, always, I feel like it has their band geeks, you know what I mean. The episode that a lot of people would say the best, like, for Ren and Steppy, and Steppy, for the fairy up parents, it's uh the TV movies like Abracatastrophe Catastrophe and especially Channel Chasers, and with as told by Ginger, it's uh Nancy was gone, either that or Hello Stranger or Butterflies are free. Uh, those are like my top three favorites. And no hope for Courtney. To be honest, I don't care that much for like the main plot with Courtney having some imposter syndrome where this background character named Hope suddenly gets uh, more popular than her, but the uh, subplot with Carl feels bad that he's driven uh, his teacher, Miss Gordon, to retirement, you know, trying to win her back with a song and dance, uh, but only to find out that, spoilers, she ends up passing away anyway, because her voice actress uh, passed away, uh, Kathleen, Kathleen Freeman. And of course, the episode is dedicated to her memory. So, easily one of the saddest episodes, one of the saddest end episode. I don't even know if I could call it bittersweet. It's just plain sad. It just ends with Carl, uh, a set in tears, a close up of his eyes set in a tear, and then the episode ends from there. Oh, oh, 
Okay, so, uh, I don't know why my pop-up's not working, but I see in the chat that Dorper has actually, uh, commissioned me. Or, at least, uh, donate to me. I'll have to go and see. Okay, yeah. Commission. Uh, thank you, Norbert. Uh, I'll be working on as soon as I can. Uh, don't know why uh, my uh, coffee uh, pop-up thingy isn't working, but at least I can uh, no fight in the chat. Uh, thank you so much for your support, Norbert. And once again, if you want to be like him or Kristen or the other folks who have been dedicated supporters of mine, uh, please head over to my coffee page. And, and yeah, I think you'll be able to click on the link to my coffee page. So yeah, thanks you once again for your support, Norbert. I'll work on your commission as soon as I can. So yeah, you know what guys, uh, I've got to skip out on like the guessing game, because it's already getting late in my area. So yeah, once I'm done with this here, uh, we'll chat a little bit more but uh, we're gonna have to wrap things up afterwards. Now uh, maybe for a separate stream, but we'll do it. Yes, yeah, so it's just a heads up that the commission idea is uh, fairly uh, complex. Yeah, 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 I'll, I'll definitely uh, get to it. I'll do my absolute best at it. I'll, I'll bet, uh, probably, I don't know if for sure it will be if we reveal the idea before it's uh, the the draw is actually complete, but it's okay, yeah, I think the idea that you shared here is pretty cool, so uh, I've got to be uh, working on it as soon as I can once again. Okay, see you out by 3000. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sports Boy say that uh, if I knew, if I know that the very first warnings of Jeff Bergman as bugs in, uh, in uh, Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue was, what's this? A joint? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was 420 uh, yesterday. Uh, happy boy 420 to those who actually uh, celebrated, I guess. Even though uh, I don't know no one would even care about or promote drug use or marijuana use. Uh, let's see. And Ber Bergman took over as that character. I uh, started with that special after Mel Blanc's passing. And Although, he will alternate between uh, Greg Burson, Billy West, and Joe Watsky in the 90s and 2000s. Yeah, I believe I did know already that that special of all things was the first time that Jeff Bergman voiced Bugs. Uh, he is a good uh, Mel Blanc, a really good Mel Blanc uh, substitute. And Eric Bell so has pro proven to be uh, just as great as well. that a part of Vex's abdomen is covered incorrectly, so I'm gonna be fixing that. It's uh, over 
right here. It's not supposed to be this dark. This part here should be darker. Oh, uh, yesterday was uh, Carmen Electra's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, birthday to her. I see uh, which episode is played right now of our real monsters. Uh, let me see. It happens to be monsters don't dance. I got all of the essentials down with current all six of these characters. Let's just say I've done so far. So yeah, so once again, uh, whenever I have the time, I will finish it up. Like current the backgrounds, add in the characters' names, and any other additional details like that uh, will be done uh, when I have the time after the stream. So I'm just gonna put my pen aside here. So, yeah, I hope you guys are well for what I've done so far. I hope you have. I hope to those who have, to those who are watching who have requested these characters. I hope you appreciate it. Oh yeah, I also yeah I did heard uh Sponge Boy that uh factory is going to be uh closing down their studio that did uh Strange Hill High, which I still haven't gone around to uh I still haven't gone around to watch the entirety of that series yet. Oh yeah, Jeff Berkman is kind of like the new Mel Blanc. Um, Whenever a classic cartoon character appears, uh, they tend to get him or Eric Bowser. Okay, good that worked. And uh, thanks again. Uh, you take care of yourself and and good luck on your exam. And thank you so much once again for your awesome support on coffee. And Zeke thinks it looks uh, really cool. The drawings here, and Stephen thinks it looks great too. And Blake Fix is awesome. Alright, thank you everybody.
Okay, so we're going to be uh, wrapping up uh, in a moment. Stick to old. Mm. Oh, mm. Okay, uh, let's just wait for the stick to old. Okay, so yeah, uh, okay, so all of you guys gonna be head out, uh, thank you uh, once again for uh, tuning in, watch me uh, work on for uh, chatting with, uh, chatting our usual dirty stuff, and make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and make sure you subscribe for uh, great stuff like this. So, yes, and make sure you have a great uh, rest of your week uh, going forward. So, yes, uh, good night, everybody. Uh, good night, uh, Rocco One and a Half. And take care of Sponge Boy and Boyke and uh, Inky as well. And Deetra. Yep. So, good night, everybody. And uh, take care. And a happy uh, belated 45th anniversary uh, to Nickelodeon.